In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the ROA and the ROE. The ROA is the return on assets, whereas the ROE is the return on equity. So let's work on this example problem. A company has 800 million in total assets and generates an annual net income of 200 million. What is the ROA or the return on assets for this company? To calculate the ROA, we could use this formula. It's equal to the net income generated by the company. This is the net income over the last 12 months divided by the total assets. And if you want to express the ROA as a percentage, we need to multiply this by 100%. So the net income for this company is 200 million. The total assets are 800 million. And we're going to multiply that by 100%. So we could cancel the unit M and two zeros. So it becomes 2 divided by 8, which is 0.25 times 100%. So the return on assets for this company is 25%. So that's the answer for this problem. By the way, as the net income of the company increases, the ROA increases. These two are directly related. As the total assets of the company increases, the return on assets is going to decrease, assuming the net income remains the same. So that's how you can calculate the ROA or the return on assets of a company. It's simply the net income divided by the total assets times 100%. Now, let's move on to our next problem. Number two, company XYZ generated a net income of 300 million in the past 12 months. This company has 800 million in shareholder equity. What is the ROE or the return on equity for this company? So let's begin with the formula. To calculate the ROE, it's going to be the net income divided by the shareholder equity, and then times 100%. So in this example, the net income is 300 million. The shareholder equity is 800 million. So 300 divided by 800, that's going to be 0.375. And if we multiply that by 100%, that will give us the answer. So the return on equity for this company is 37.5%. So that's it for number two. Now, like the ROA, the ROE is directly related to the net income. As the net income for the company increases, the return on equity will increase. However, as the equity of the company increases, the ROE will decrease if the net income is held constant. So those are some other things that you may want to know if you're studying for a test or something. Now let's work on a problem that has more steps. Number three. Company ABC has 900 million in total assets and 300 million in total liabilities. This company has an annual net income of 120 million. So part A, what is the return on assets for this company? So we have everything that we need in order to calculate the ROA. Recall that the ROA is going to be the net income divided by the total assets times 100%. So we can see that the company has a net income of 120 million. The total assets of this company is 900 million. And so we just got to divide those two numbers. 
So 120 million divided by 900 million, that's 0.13 repeating, or 0.1333. If you multiply that by 100%, this is going to give us a return on assets of 13.3%. So that's it for part A. That's how we can calculate the ROA in this example. Now let's move on to part B. Calculate the amount of equity present in this company. How can we do that? Equity is equal to assets minus liabilities. So in this case, we can say that the shareholder equity, which I'm going to write SE, is equal to the total assets, TA, minus the total liabilities, TL. So the total assets for this company are 900 million. The total liabilities are 300 million. So the equity or the shareholder equity is 600 million for this company. So that is the answer for part B. Now let's move on to the last part, part C. What is the ROE for this company? So to calculate the return on equity, it's going to be the net income divided by the equity in the company or the shareholder equity times 100%. So the net income is 120 million. The shareholder equity is 600 million and then times 100%. So 120 divided by 600, that's 0 0.2 as a decimal. Times 100, that's going to give us an ROE value of 20%. And so that's it for this problem. So another equation that you want to add to your list of equations is this one. Equity is equal to assets minus liabilities. Now let's work on one more problem. Number four, a company has a net income of 250 million. The ROA and ROE for this company are 10% and 25% respectively. What is the total assets for this company? So we know that the ROA is equal to the net income divided by the total assets times 100%. But let's not worry about the 100% part for now. What we're going to do is we're going to rearrange the equation. We're going to multiply both sides by TA. And so that's going to give us the total assets times the ROA. And that's equal to the net income. And then if we divide both sides by the ROA, we'll get this formula. So the total assets of the company is going to be the net income divided by the ROA in its decimal form. So for part A, we have a net income of 250 million and the return on assets is 10%. So we need to take 10% divided by 100, so that's going to be 0.10 as a decimal. 250 million divided by 0.10 is 2,500 million, which is 2.5 billion. Keep in mind, 1 billion is 1,000 times a million. So now, let's move on to Part B. How much equity does the company have? So we know that the ROE is the net income divided by the equity times 100%. If we rearrange that equation, we'll get this. The equity in the company is the net income divided by the ROE in its decimal form. So the net income is 250 million. The return on equity is 25%. So as a decimal, it's 25 over 100, 
which is 0 0.25. So 250 divided by 0.25, that's 1,000. So we get 1,000 times a million, which is equal to 1 billion. So that is the equity in this company. Calculate the total liabilities for this company. So we know that the equity is the difference between the total assets and the total liability. Well, we want to get this. So what I'm going to do is add TL to both sides. And so right now we have equity plus total liabilities is equal to total assets. Subtracting both sides by equity, we get that the total liabilities is the total assets minus the equity. So this will help us to get the total liabilities. So the total assets for this company are 2.5 billion. Shareholder equity is 1 billion. So 2.5 minus 1, it gives us 1.5 billion in total liabilities. So that's how you can calculate the total liabilities in this example. It's just the difference between the total assets and the equity. So that's it for this video. Thanks again for watching.